Yo, 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 we're going to be looking at that Iliad packet, so get ready. All right, guys, so let's start with the prologue. I know you guys had this already filled out, but let's just check it over. Make sure you got what you need, okay? So we look here at the prologue, and I notice, boom, first thing's going to be that vocab, right? So when I look here, I'm going to go through and make sure that I have uh, both the part of speech and synonyms, and there are a couple places that I can find that. The thesaurus is where I'm going to go first, okay? So this one is already filled out for us, so you guys should already have these things, but I just want to point out that that is what we do before we read, right? So as you are looking up those words, you will know when you see them in the prologue what they mean, okay? So we got that. Uh, so now let's review some of those cause and effects you can see going on in the prologue. So here, guys, when we are reading, we're going to be looking for both the cause and effect like we talked about, right? So what happens and what like causes or what leads to that next what is the next thing that happens because of that okay so here this was already filled out but let's just review some of those things to make sure you guys understand where we're going here so the first one says Ares was not invited to the wedding and Paris was forced to choose the fairest goddess right so that was the cause well what's the effect of that oh well Paris chose Aphrodite who made Helen fall in love with him Hashtag drama, right? That's the whole war right there, okay? So that's the first part. Second one, Helen left Sparta with Paris for Troy. Yikes. And a thousand ships sailed for Troy to bring Helen back to Sparta. One thousand! That's so many, okay? But first you guys um, should have those already filled out, just to remind you. King Agamemnon angered the god Apollo by refusing to, refusing to release Chryseis, and that's where things got confusing with that priest daughter. Um, and then Apollo rained a plague upon the Greek camp. That was when all those arrows came raining down, okay? So if this was what you guys were doing um, in your packets in your groups, you would have filled out those blanks. Super duper. All right, so let's move on to chapters one through three of the Iliad and see what we learned, all right? So chapter one, once again, uh, you guys have some vocab here, okay? So I am going to help you. Whoa, whoa, my screen's going crazy. I'm going to help you um, with those and make sure that you have it. You might have a different meaning, right? Because there are lots of synonyms, but just to kind of get you in the mindset here, okay? So the first one actually does not have a synonym. Um, so pyres is a heap of combustible material. So it's anything um, that can be burned. And in this case, it has to do with corpses. Bedtime story, we love it, okay? Um, so it's part of his funeral ceremony in that one, okay? So in this one, if I can't find a synonym, it doesn't exist, I go to the dictionary. Cool. All right, next one, reluctant means afraid. Compensate means to repay. Seething means to burn. Goodness gracious. There we go. Pacify means to calm down. Defy means to go against. Con contempt means hatred, and then submission means like obedience, agreeing to do what that person's asking, that kind of thing, okay? So check your vocab, make sure you have it. If you had something different, it's probably right, uh, but just make sure it's somewhat like what I have here. Cool. All right, so next we have that cause and effect. You guys are filling in some blanks there, so let's make sure you got those correct because this is going to be really important to know. Chapter one is called Agamemnon's Anger. He is an angry dude. All right, so the first one, Achilles proposed that Agamemnon return Chryseis to end the plague. Agamemnon returned Chryseis, but took Briseis from Achilles. So, right, there's lots of drama, lots of ladies going to all different spots and places. Um, that is going to cause some issues. All right, second one, Achilles' mother, Thetis, as we know, heard him mourning and asked Zeus to help with the Trojans, so he's kind of like crying to his mom here, right? Um, and Achilles would not fight, and Agamemnon would suffer until he gave Achilles the respect he deserved. So Achilles is one of the strongest warriors, right? And because um, he is all upset and like, eh, this happened to me, he's like, I'm not going to fight, and that's going to affect the entire war, okay? So that's chapter one. Then down here, guys, figurative language. So we're looking at how does figurative language um, show up in this book. It's everywhere, okay? So here's an example. Yours will be different from mine. But it, in this case, it was looking um, for a simile, okay? So mine says, Zeus towered like a huge thundercloud over the mountains. Again, yours might be different from mine, but that's what we're looking for there. Cool beans. All right, chapters two through three. So once again, we have some vocab, all right? So the first one is arrogant. Um, in this one, it says stock up. That also, though, means like in the way that you look at yourself. So like you're looking at yourself in a sophisticated way. So we could also say um, we could say selfish for that one. OK. And then here we got hordes. That's a crowd. 
cajole, um, in this case, is going to mean kind of to like joke with or deceive a little bit, okay? Orator means lecturer. Goad or goaded is how you'll see it means to harass. Ranting means angry or rant, like angry, right? Um, sulk or sulked means to pout, so that's all going to be chapter 2. And then chapter 3, we have just a few things here. Um, impetuous means eager. And then a decree means a lot. Okay, so there's a lot there. Make sure you can check those. You got it. All right. Um, and then again, cause and effect. Okay, so chapter 2, a test. We have one cause, one effect. Zeus sends a false dream to Agamemnon. Um, and because of this, Agamemnon tested the Greek soldiers' courage. And in the end, the Greeks were over eager, except Achilles, to fight the Trojans. So that's when they're asleep and they think they have to get going. And it, like it's a whole thing. But it's all a test and it's all a trick, right? Okay. And then chapter 3, a challenge. Paris challenged any Greek hero to a fight. And then Menelaus is the one who actually accepted the challenge. All right, so that's going to turn into something, right? And then Paris finally agreed to fight uh, starting whoever wins will get Helen and her wealth, right? Um, sorry, not starting, stating. And offerings were made to the gods and the oaths were sworn. So here, it's just important to know that Helen again is on the line, right? That she uh, is obviously the one that's desired and she is the one that they're going after, okay? So let's look at that figurative language for chapters two through three. Again, you could have found different examples, but just make sure that they align with the definitions that we know, okay? So for chapter two, it's looking for a simile. This one says, you flutter like doves with a rat uh, on their dove coat right so that one would be comparing music like a s okay and then chapter three we're looking for a simile happy as a hungry lion facing a wounded antelope again that's using like or as personification the dust of the marching army blotted out the sun so that's making the dust do something that a human or a living thing would do right okay all right, guys, so that is it for chapters two, one through three, excuse me, two and three at the end here. Um, so make sure that you have everything down in your packet. This is a lot of new things that we're doing. So please go back if you need to, and we'll see what happens next.